Welcome everyone to the April 2017 New Hampshire GEG broadcast and today it's a smaller panel. We've been so just lucky and just really blessed that this year we've had this awesome group that have come in every time that we've been able to interview and join in on the panel. But today it's a small panel of myself and Craig Scheel. Um, Craig Shields, my co-leader, there he is, and um, so Craig and I are going to kind of steer this one together. We had hoped to have a couple people on the panel today, but it's going to be just the two of us today, but we have some really cool things to share you, and I wanted to share this because as some of us are getting closer to the end of the year, trying to organize, hey, we have all these classrooms and all these lessons and things we put in classroom and all these files we've been sharing, and I, I get that sometimes it can seem like overwhelming with the organization of all when the Google Classroom and the same thing in the beginning of the year setting it all up again so I'm going to give you some really great tips um, for how to better organize the end of this year going into the beginning of next year to make the whole Google Classroom and using Google Classroom and Chrome and um, Chromebooks in your classroom so much better streamlined and um, also Craig is going to share something really cool that I'm so excited is coming it's called team drive and he's going to share that and I'm it's something that I've just been waiting for for I've had workarounds but it this is just going to make things sharing within a school environment so much better so much better organized and I'm just so excited for it so but I'll let him tell you about it because it's very exciting Okay, so I am going to start by sharing out my screen and I'm going to um, talk about classroom. Okay, before I even start though, um, Craig, can you see the public link to the document for today? Yes, yes. Okay, so if you couldn't see it before, this is the link to today's document, what we'll be covering today with um, links to the different things that we'll be talking about, directions on what I'm going to show um, in just a second, and links to good extensions and so forth are all up on here. So I'm going to bring that up like that so you can better see it. So again, there is the link, and I believe Craig will put it in the answer question answer area as well. But I just wanted to share that link with you um, shortly. Okay, so I'm going to start by coming over here. Um, I've had some teachers that when I'm talking about classroom or using classroom, some of them have said to me, Jen, I love classroom, great idea and all, but you know, I get a little frustrated that I have to start from scratch and recreate the wheel. I said, what do you mean? They're like, well, yes, we can share documents in Drive, but you know how in Moodle or Blackboard or the others you can pull in a course shell so that you can not have to recreate your, your assignments and you recreate your um, polls and questions. I said, well, you can reuse a post. Yeah, but Jen, you can even do that between other teachers. You can reuse almost an entire class between one teacher and another teacher. And I thought about it and I went, oh, you're right. And it's such a pain. If I want to share something with another teacher, I have to make her co-teacher of my class. And I don't want to do that. And I was sitting working co-teaching in a science classroom. And all of a sudden, I just had this epiphany. I'm like, wait a minute. Yes, you can. And that's when I came up with this idea. And what we call it is classroom repository. It's a way that you can share lessons, assignments, fully crafted assignments all the way down to the directions, attachments, everything, questions, polls, videos between teachers of same subject area, same grade level, or new teachers that come in next year brand new and don't want to have to start completely from scratch. So what is a class repository? Well, I put the directions here on my site. I've streamlined my um, address because I used to get the, my old was JL out and everyone forgot the L and, and people were calling me Jill for a while. So I streamlined, so there's my new address. It's jenniferloughton.com and I have directions on here on what a class repository is and I'm not going to read these entire directions I'm just going to take you through and so you can see exactly what it is so right here I have a class repository it's basically it's a classroom it's another Google classroom but this Google classroom doesn't have students so right here I'm going to go and you're going to see I've disabled the class code no students in here and when you look in here you notice right here it says this is not a class it's a repository to share assignments resources and more and for right now with this one there's just four of us who are in here and notice there's only one post you're like Jen it's empty there's one post no this one post 
are, is the, are the directions, if you will. It says, this is a space for all the biology teachers, so the teachers of the same subject, to share fully crafted assignments, meaning all the directions, attachments, everything are fully crafted in here. Um, to see an assignment, click Save Posts Above. So come up here, and you'll notice there actually are assignments sitting in here. There are announcements sitting in here. There's questions sitting in here, assignments sitting in here. And even cooler, if you look to the left, you'll notice there's topics. And I'll show you where those topics came from. So what we do to pull in something into this repository or pull something back from it. If you are a teacher who shared out to this repository, because you also teach biology, and you want to pull something into here, you go down and you click Reuse Post and you pull the post from a classroom you already teach. So I'm going to grab this one. But very important, because you're sharing, create new copies of all attachments. So you'll have a separate brand new copy of the attachment for this assignment in your class. Hit reuse. And here's the important things we did. One, we made sure it had a topic. It will pull in the topic from your class. So when another teacher comes and looks and says, I need something on cells, they can come over here and they can filter down to everything related to cells. The important thing to do is to drop down and not post this, but choose Save as Draft. And the reason is, I'm going to grab this one right here. You know how when you create an assignment, and you post it, but then you go back and edit it, sometimes you lose options such as right here, the make a copy for each student. Well, if one teacher just wanted to post it as view directions, but another teacher actually wanted them each to have a copy, if you posted it, that option would be gone. But if you leave it as a draft, the next person who goes to use it gets their own separate attachment. They can now make a copy for each student. And notice we put the directions right in here so you don't have to recreate the wheel. All the directions, the topic, all of it is already put in there for the teachers to share between each other. So I'm going to close this one. And the important thing is you have, that we talked about is anyone who uses these, you don't post assignments because it's not a class. You just save them as a draft. Okay, well, how do you pull it into your classroom then? So I'm going to take you to, I'll take you to the help desk one. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pull in same thing. You go to your class, you hit reuse post, and you come to the one that's called archive repositories. So we put the word archive and repository to remind ourselves it's not an active classroom and that it's a repository for lessons and so forth. So I can come right here. And now I can go and grab one of those assignments and pull it into my class. Now, when I pull it into my actual class, and I'm going to grab, I think I'll grab this one. Remember, I create new copies of the attachment. I hit reuse. Now, in my class, notice it brought her topic into my class. I can change it. I don't have to use her topic. I can drop down and make it something else. But in my class, of course, I can assign it if I want to. And, of course, I can drop down and choose specifically which students I want to assign it to. So I'm going to close that out, and I'm going to go back to my other class, the repository. So here is one that I created for biology. And then then I'm going to show another example. This is one I created for physical science. Another class that I co-teach in is physical science. And same thing, we're trying to figure out how to share between the teachers without having to make each teacher a co-teacher of each other's classes. Or persons like myself, specialists that are coaches, and I don't want to be a co-teacher for every single classroom in the entire building. However, of the repositories between the teachers, I can be, and then we can share, and I can say, hey, I posted that in the repository, and I can tell a teacher, and she goes, oh, okay, I'll pull it out of there. She doesn't have to make me a co-teacher of every single classroom in the building. Now, if I go to the About area, I put the directions again right here on exactly what we use this for. So we use this so that Teachers of the same subject, teachers of a grade level, or new teachers coming in can now easily share not just um, attachments. Um, so like we're going to come right here, you'll see there's 51 posts we have in here. So I'm going to drop down, and you will see that we have all of these different assignments that now the physical science teachers can pull between one another. And we have all the attachments and so forth are all in here. So let me see if I can find one down here. Uh, here's a good one. The web quest. Uh, Catapult Lab. 
So right here you can see make a copy for each student and that way when the next person goes in because we've saved them as a draft they can decide if they want to make a copy for each student or they just want it as a view file for directions or however they would like to post it. So it's, it's really just a simple, simple way to go around that one issue I'd always heard of, Jennifer, we have to re recreate the will. No, you don't. You just create a classroom that is a repository for a subject or grade. And I say subject or grade level because remember, there is the um, uh, limitation of that you can only put, I think, it's, is it 20 or 25? I think it's 20, isn't it, Craig? 20 teachers in a classroom at a time? Uh to be honest, yeah. I don't know the answer to that question. I think it's 20. And what we've done to get around that is we usually, if, like, say, we always use Classroom also for some of our um, our teams or PLCs or clubs. And so what we'll do is we'll do 20 teachers as co and then the others are students. We've tried posting them in as a group, and sometimes it seems to add, but it seems to cut off right around 20. So if you do it within a grade level or a specific subject, then you can not worry about that that 20 number because um, physical science only so many teachers in the building teach that one biology only so many or grade level depending on the site so you can really fine-tune it and then you can have um, one account that is in each repository so like here we made the our Google administrator account is a co-teacher in each of the repositories so through one account we can get to every single repository if we need to easily to pull things and add things for others so that is just a really simple thing that we came up with as a way to easily share entirely crafted assignments, posts, questions, announcements between Google Classrooms. Make it so much easier for starting for next year, especially if all of a sudden you are assigned to a new subject that last year you didn't teach. You don't have to start and recreate the wheel. So that is Classroom Repositories using Google Classroom the way you've already used it, just with a different spin. Okay. Then, yeah. uh, can yeah. I ask you a question? Of course. Um, so with this, I, I know that you in this particular class you have 51 drafts already made. Who actually populated those? Is that a mixture of the four? A that mixture is? of the four, yeah. Okay. And um, what's neat is when um, a couple of us co-teach, when we post into the class, you can see which one of us posted into the class. But yeah, this is a mixture of the four of us. Um, I don't know if it'll, let me see if it'll show in here no and here it doesn't I think if I click on one though no it doesn't show but um, when we post it shows who did it so these this is a mixture Katie did some Heather did some I did some so this is each of us um, posting in here so you can both pull from here for your class but you can also um, put in and share and contribute to the sharing area. So these have been shared between the different teachers. And this worked really well because when I was in biology, I wasn't co-teaching with the other teacher um, who wanted to, and I said, listen, you don't have to make me a co-teacher or Mike a co-teacher of your class. Instead, we'll share out the repository and anything we put in here, you can pull it. If you put something in here, then Mike can pull it. And, and that works so much better for her. And I think that also was a nice way for like you and I, Craig, going into classrooms where they're like, oh, I'm not too sure if I want someone that they know that they can have this resource and then it kind of pulls us in of oh hey I really like that repository you want to come in and show how you did that lesson with Mike I really like that so it was just a nice little also way to um, further coach and help out in the classrooms as well so okay any other questions Craig I'm sorry no 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 I, I was I was just curious yeah it, it was just I seem to get and I got this in a lot of other schools too I got the gen you know I just you have to start if a new person comes in they have to start all over and Moodle we could just give them a course shell and I was thinking about a little bit and then all of a sudden I went wait a minute no we don't have to recreate the wheel and I thought a course report classroom repository and that way you can share them between the teachers you can also for a new teacher coming in or for someone who gets reassigned to a subject they didn't teach a year before, it's not having to start over. So the only things I mentioned are students, we turned off the class to remind people, hey, this is a, not really a classroom, we turned that off. We put the directions here in the about area, and we put the directions as the only post that is in here, and I made the topic archive directions. So even on the left, if you forgot what to do and somehow you don't see this post, you can click archive directions and get right to this post and remember um, exactly how to use the area. So I'm going to stop right there and shift gears into something else that um, I found to be really, really helpful. 
Um, so in some of the lessons we've started doing, one of the things in I've seen in a lot of the subjects I've been working with is a ton of printing, even with Chromebooks in the room, just lots of printing and lots of um, handouts. And I get, well, Jen, I have it in a PDF. I don't have it in a form I can put into Google Docs, and I don't want to have to format them. I said, you don't have to do that. There's this really cool extension, and it's also an add-on. Um, it's also an app that you can use that will allow you to assign a PDF from Classroom, give each student a copy, they can write and draw right over it and pass it right back in because the add-on also integrates into Classroom. So I'm going to show this one to you. Uh, let's see, I'm going to go to this class right here and come down to, um, let's see. identifying the variables and see if you see it before I do identifying the variables where are you okay I'll pull it in from the class because I'm not seeing it for some reason and I'll go here and identifying the variables tell me if you see it before me because I'm yeah, I haven't Okay. Can you do the search feature? Control, yeah, control F. Hmm, it's really strange. I'm not seeing it. Um, oh, here it is, right here. It's one of those things where it's right in front of your face and you just do not see it. Okay, so I'm going to hit reuse. Okay. So right here, this is a PDF, and I'm going to click on the PDF really quick. And I did not create this. This was created by the science teacher, and it's a PDF, and she didn't have any other – she didn't want to have to convert it to a Google Doc. She's got a lot of them. And so what we do is we um, post it in Classroom, and we set it for make a copy for each student. But what's really cool is when the students actually open it up, I'm going to open it in a new window, they have at the top the words open with and they have the extension called Kami, K-A-M-I. And so I'm going to open this up in a new window and I'm trying to realize why it's not opening in Kami and I realized, oh, I turned Kami off for some reason while I was getting ready. So let me turn it back on again. There we go. That's better. So normally for the students, it automatically opens right into Kami for them. And I sometimes say Kami, some say Kami. I'm like, well, from the north, from the south, however you want to pronounce it. But I love com um, working with Kami because now I'm doing it because it it's integrates with Classroom. It saves to your Google Drive. And I'm going to close that out. And yeah, go that and it integrates to your Google Drive, and whatever they type on here, because they um, signed it from Classroom, when they save it, it will post back to Classroom, and that they can um, then share it back to, and it's just a PDF. She didn't have to recreate the wheel. So, for instance, they can come over here, and they can type... And they can draw. And there's also undo. And then up here at the top, there's a save button, but you can normally for the students, we set it to automatically save, and you can see that it's automatically saving. They can push save now, and usually they like to push save, and it just makes them feel better sometimes to make sure they can save it. Um, and when they post it back to class, when they save it, and they go back to classroom, hit mark is done, when the teacher clicks on it, it shows all their writing. But the students, just to make double, triple sure that it posts everything they write, they'll come up here, to the little share icon, they'll hit upload, and it just gives them a link. They don't need to do this, it's just an extra step, and if it's the first time you're using it, it's just a nice way to make sure you'll get it. So the students grab this little link, and what they do in Classroom is they go down to the bottom and they post it as a private comment. They'll say, here's the link just in case. We haven't had a time yet where it hasn't posted back, but just in case, they've um, posted that link as a private comment, but it allows them to draw, write, type over any document, a PDF. And I had one student say, oh my gosh, so I can pull any of the applications online? I said, yeah, any of the applications online, any of those things that you're trying to find, you don't have to print, you can type it right here and you can email it straight from here, you can save it. There is a print icon, but you don't have to print. 
and there is a paid version. We don't use the paid version. The paid version allows you to autograph, but most of the students realize that they could just autograph like this, and so they're like, well, why would I pay when I can just... So you can autograph if you want to, but we have the free version. The free versions allowed us to do highlighting, strike through, um, writing with text, creating, so we have been using the free version. And it integrates right to Classroom and, and also Google Drive. And so that's allowed the teachers who were kind of hesitant about using some things in Classroom because they have a lot of things in PDF for version only to now be able to better integrate those assignments into their classroom. The last thing that I was going to show, oh, that's that quiz, is this. Um, some of you are familiar with it, Flippity.net. Well, Flippity.net just got even better. It used to be you had to come here to Flippity.net, and you had to um, come here to see the demo on how to use something, come here for the instructions, and then you had to come here to get the template that would have, we'll call it the script, built into it. And I'll show you an example, because I started using this many years ago where this was the only option. But when I show you what it does, you're like, oh my goodness. But now you don't have to do this anymore. So I'm going to show you the original one. So here's one of my original flashcards. This was, a, I grabbed the template from the site right here. I clicked template. It had me make a copy. And the moment I did, it put it in my drive. And that's why it has the word copy right there. I gave it a different name. And then it said, okay, type it. It had some dummy terms in here, like um, um, capital of, of Malaysia, and then had the answer. So you, basically, it's term, answer, or question, answer, term, answer, question, answer. So on the left, you put all the terms, and on the right, you put all the answers. And then when you were done with the old way you did it, you went to File, Publish to the Web. You would hit Published. You wouldn't care about any of this sort of stuff. You just published it. And then you came down here to get link here, and this link would appear, and you would be able to click. And now with that just simple spreadsheet, oh, I didn't publish it to the web, did I? With that simple spreadsheet, I'll show you what it can do. File, publish to the web. This is a really old one. You don't have to do this part anymore. It used to be a very long time ago. You also had to put this in here, delete. There we go. Oh, that's really strange. I did I do that before? So this is the old version, and the new version is so much easier. So um, here's another one, same thing. You, This is a quiz show, and for this one, same thing. You would put the categories across the top. You'd put question, answer, question, answer, question, answer. You would go to file published to the web. But let me show you the new, much more easier way so that those directions where I obviously just um, I kind of flubbed it up myself, you don't have to do that anymore. So right here, I have just a regular spreadsheet where I pulled in terms from maybe it was from a quiz I pulled off McGraw-Hill online, or maybe I created them. However, it's just a simple spreadsheet that I put terms, answers, terms, answers, or question, answer, however it is. You come up now to add on. And then you can go to Get Add-ons, type in Flippity, and add it. Come back to Add-ons and choose Flippity, and then choose Pick a Template. The templates are, there's so many of them, they do amazing things. You can still hit Demo to see what they do. There's quiz shows, there's interactive crosswords. Wait till I show you the bingo one, that one's really cool. Hangman, spelling words, this one I use pretty much like at least three to four times a month, um, and so forth. But I'm going to start, oh, Mad Libs, yeah. I'm going to start with this one. So I'm going to click Use, and suddenly you're going to see these blue categories appear at the top. So see up here the blue category. Do not do anything to the blue categories. The blue categories are kind of where their hidden scripts, if you will, are. So leave the blue, anything in blue, you leave alone. You can fill out all the information, everything else, just leave the blue alone. Right here it says to you, okay, here is your link, but before, oh, that's there's a misspelling there, important, you have to go to File, Publish to the Web, and click the publish button for it to work. Before I leave though, notice there's this short URL because before I had this long link I had to share with people. Now I can click short URL and I'll have this short URL that I can grab 
So I'm going to copy that. But again, it says, okay, fine, you have the short URL, but you still need to go do this. So fine, I'm going to hit close. I'm going to go file, publish to the web, and I'm going to just hit publish. I don't really even care what any of this is. I'm just going to hit publish, and I'm going to close it. And now I'm going to go to a new tab, put in that short link. And now I have these really cool flashcards. And I used... Um, a sample right here. These are not mine. So in fact, I'm going to switch this out. So watch this. I'm going to put in some of my questions. I'm going to change what's in that sample. Command C. By the way, you can quickly update like I'm doing right now. And I'm going to get rid of these. Delete. Okay. And I'm going to refresh. Here we go. And notice how my, it just automatically updated. So this is what this does. First, it makes interactive flashcards so that students can quickly study before a test and so forth. I've actually played a game of, um, um, I can't think of it. It's, it's the one they have to come up with two words. They can only use two words to describe it, and someone else has to think of the answer. Quiz word, it's not coming to me right now. But I've played that game with them, and that's been a lot of fun. Um, notice you can color code the flashcards. You can also add on. Have it read the flashcards out loud for the students. In the Google students. Doc, go to this menu to add on more. Um, you can remove cards. So if in a certain study group you don't want a card, you can remove them, shuffle them, so forth. And you can also, um, there we go, flip it up to the next one. It also creates a list so they can study and they can listen and have it all read to them out loud. It also creates practice. And it'll give them the answer, and they can go on to the next one, and it'll actually will tell them if they're right or wrong. It does a matching activity. So I can come on here now, and I can, I'm, I'm, not, I'm just going to grab something. So they could match two things, and they would disappear, and they can decide to time. And as the things disappear, they can collapse to make the um, spaces just um, go away. It creates a word cloud. Even more it does. This is really cool creates bingo cards, I'll show you that in a minute, crosswords, hangman activities, and it creates, it says print quiz, but I found out I don't really have to print the quiz. So you can either do fill in the blank or matching. You can decide how many, you know, do you, which, do you want side one to be the proper side two of your flashcard? Do you want the question to be random? So forth. And I'm going to click generate printable quiz. So here's my printable quiz. But what I found was actually most of the time the students can type right on here. And some of them even have typed on here, taken a screenshot and passed that in. Now, I could also save it as a PDF and distribute it via Kami, but I've found that the students have been able to type on it so far, so I really haven't had to print it. But you can, or you can save it as a PDF and then they can write on it in Kami right from classroom. Um, the other thing is, I'm going to see if I can pull this up so you can see it because it's blocked right now by a message, is at the bottom you can click share on each of these activities and not only will it give you a sharing link but I, it gives you a share directly to Classroom so you can bring these activities directly into Classroom right from Flippity. So let me show you a couple of cool ones you can do. Here's one called um, send to a bingo page and the bingo page is really cool. Um, here's the different, you can decide which terms you want in here and you can shuffle whatever. I'm going to hit play and notice it says you can play online. So you could actually, and if you're watching right now, you can actually scan this QR code if you'd like to, but you can also share the link and what will happen is any of the students who put that link in will have an interactive bingo card where they can actually click and mark off. So when you say out the question, they have to mark off the answer. They're like, I don't like my board. I, I'm, a, I'm not doing well because my board's a, an unlucky board. Okay, click new board. There, now you can start again. So you never get the, you gave me the unlucky board. And so now they can, and they can play this interactive bingo game and they can do it from their phone, their Chromebook, whatever. Or you can be doing it right now while you're watching with me and you can switch your board, you can clear the board and it's completely interactive all from either scanning the QR code or using this link. And you can decide if you want it to be the terms or if you want it to be the, um, the answers, whatever you want on there. So that's the bingo card. Um, the crossword, I'm going to grab this one, I think. Let me try the other one. 
The crossword depends on, yeah, because I have too many words in my, you really, that one's more for if you have shorter terms and shorter answers. Um, the crossword will generate really nicely if you have shorter terms or shorter answers. So let me try this. I'm going to put this back to the way it was, and I'm going to refresh this. Okay, and now I'm going to come here, and yeah, there we go. There we go. So the crossword, um, you can generate, you can have it be super big like this, depending on how many terms you put in. And you also can decide, like, if it comes up, you're like, ooh, I don't like the way that looks. You can hit refresh until it generates the way you want it to. And then with the crossword, you can click share down here. Most of the activities you can click share. I've just noticed sometimes if I auto share to classroom right from here, sometimes I get an error code. So what I prefer to do is I click the print icon, but I don't print it. I save it as a PDF. And like I showed you, I distribute it in Kami. I remove any kind of headers and footers so it doesn't have that page one of two and that sort of thing. And then I distribute it via classroom and we use Kami to write over it. So what's really cool about this, you have hangman activity. You have a bingo activity, you have crossword, you have a word cloud, you have matching, you have practice, you have flashcards, and all of this just came from a Google spreadsheet with term, answer, term, answer, term, answer. And that's it. And all of that, just, just from this one spreadsheet of, that you copied in or you typed in, creates all these interactive activities that you can share. You don't need to recreate the wheel for the to make each of these activities individually, it makes it with just the one add-on. So let's try another one. Beginning of the year, end of the year, the first thing I know all of us do is we pull names of the students in our classes, either from Power School or Aspen or whatever, into a spreadsheet. So we have like, you know, their email addresses, all that kind of stuff. But what if you could use this to instantly do some other really great organizing things? I'm going to come back up here to the add-on, and I'm going to come back to Flippity, pick a template, and I use this one, I think, the absolute most from workshops. Craig, I use this so much in workshops and so forth because I'm always doing raffles and who's, you know, that, that sort of thing and putting people into groups to work together. And sometimes adults are hard enough, it's just as hard as students to put into groups. So um, I'm going to come and I'm going to use, let me see which one. Yeah, I'll, I'll use that one. Okay, so I'm going to use this one. Random name picker. So I'm going to click use, and it's going to build my template. Um, again, you can shorten the URL. And I'm going to show you how to find this if you lose it. You're like, Jen, I don't know how to get back. I forgot to copy it, and I don't know how to get back there. I'll show you how to do that. Command C. Close. And you do have to go to File, Publish to the Web, and you're going to notice something that happened, and I'll bring your attention to it. Um, publish. Okay. And now I have this interactive link that I can open up, and this is what it does. Hey, I'm going to decide who wins the prize for today that gets to go up and, and clean the board. No, just kidding. I'm going to click right there. I used this actually in the workshop I was just doing. I, did a, I was in a Google Admin workshop with... Um, Anthony and Apps Events, and we use this for the prizes. So you can click right here, and you can click the spinner wheel so that you can pick who's getting prizes for the day. You also can do the simple one of, okay, who is the one who is going to be chosen today to do X task in the classroom? Come here to single, and you can do it simple like this. Or, okay, we're going to line up at the door, and today, Jane, you're in the front of the line, and this is the lineup for today. Or, okay, we're going to be working today in groups of four, or I'm going to put you into teams of um, three teams, or even better, seating chart. Okay, so I've decided we're going to move this around. Catherine, I'm going to have you come up to the front, and Dustin, I think I'll have you come to the front too. And you know what, I, I have an extra space over here. So Daniel, I think I'm going to have you come up over here. So you can also create seating charts. I'm going to click more, and there's even more things that you can do. And there's something called tournament bracket. This is really cool. And I'm going to click on this and it creates this tournament bracket. So any of you who've done any kind, we just did a tournament as um, a staff and I saw this afterwards. I was like, oh, we could have used it. We did all these um, tournaments. We 
um, all these activities. It was kind of like the Olympics of the staff at Christmas time. It was pretty funny. And we had these tournament boards that we could have used this for. And again, you can click down here and you can share out this board so that you don't have to like, t you can actually share this link or via classroom or via the QR code, however you want to. Now, you probably noticed something. My last names disappeared. So if you've made a list of your students' first name and last name, what you'll want to do before you do this add-on is right-click over here on your first row and insert one to the right that will be empty like that. So when it populates, it won't get rid of your, it'll just push your last names over here. And then the other thing you can look at doing is if you have two Jacks or two Janes in the classroom, you can just add on their initial if you want, or you can have your first name over here and have this be what you use for your list. That's up to you, but I wanted to make sure you're aware that if you have the last names in here, put an empty column here before you put the add-on in so it doesn't get rid of your last names like it did. My email addresses are fine. I can have all the info over here I want. It won't hurt a thing because none of these columns are blue. It's not, it's fine. But the second column, leave it empty so that, or you, even better if you want, you can put the names together and then have an empty column right afterwards. However, but with this one spreadsheet of names that most of us pull into a spreadsheet already, you now have instantly a tournament chart, a spinner wheel, line up at the door, put them into groups, and yes, you can shuffle the groups and you can share out the group that you've chosen with someone else, a seating chart, teams, and even more. And this is all from an add-on right here called Flippity. It is flippity.net, and the last thing I'm gonna show you is Jen, how do I go back and get that URL? I missed it. I forgot to copy it. Well, notice now that I picked a template, it no longer says template. It says flippity.net URL. And if I click it, it'll bring it right up to where I can shorten that URL. And there it is right there. So I don't remember it. It's okay. Flippity will remember it for me. Um, see, Craig, did I miss anything? I think that's everything on my list, right? Yeah, I think so. Oh, wait, no, I had one on here. Um, this is just a quick one because I've had some teachers mention to me, Jen, it's very frustrating when the students are doing a quiz in a Google form, especially an essay quiz, and the internet goes down or the form flashes and they lose everything. This extension, Form, Save, and Restore, is right up here. And if you're filling out a Google form, they can actually click it and hit every so often hit save form as it is. And that way if the internet's going up and down, whatever, they can bring the form back up and hit restore. Now here's the caveat. It will not restore multiple choice questions. So if you have a hundred multiple choice questions, no, and I wish it did. I've tried to find another one. It will restore short answer, long answer, and check boxes, but not multiple choice or drop down. So it's just a nice little one to have, especially if you have those long essays and they're so happy you got them to write and they're like, oh my gosh, you're not going to write that again. You can have them hit save the form as it is. And then when they bring, if the form comes back up again, restore it, and that will put their data right back into the form so they don't lose it and they can hit submit and so forth. So that was another one that's really helpful, um, especially doing your quizzes with Google Forms. Okay, so now I'm going to get this back over to Craig. I'm going to hit stop. Okay. All right, so we're going to switch gears a little bit. Um, and talk about Drive and how you uh, can be um, more organized in terms of being able to find things. So um, I'm just, okay, here we go. Uh, give me one second. All right. So, Jen, do you see the screen? Oh, wait, wait. Hold on. Yep, I've got it. Okay. So, um, Basically, Google has come up with something called uh, Team Drive, and if you don't see it in your Google Drive, then you might want to talk with your uh, Google administrator, who's ever in charge of your actual Google domain, and ask for it to uh, be turned on, as I believe it's now available for, for all EDU uh, domains. 
And so basically now the mind shift is that you either have your drive, so think of it as files that you've created um, or things that you'd normally have on your, your, your laptop, uh, but now there's also a, uh, a section called Team Drive. So why might you be interested? Why might you want to use that? Uh, there's a there's a couple scenarios. So let's say that you uh, again what Jen was talking about you have a PLC and you have a group of teachers who are interested in uh, Sharing information you don't want to have to recreate the wheel uh, What you can in fact do is you can create a team drive. So I'm just going to come here hit new I'm going to make a team drive and I'll just call this NHGEG And I'll say create and uh, within seconds, I will have a team drive. So you'll notice right away that it looks a little different. Up at the top here, uh, it's there's like a, I like to think of it as the classroom look. Uh, there's now like a banner. It is clearly indicating to you that you are not in your own drive. You are in what I just created, a New Hampshire GEG drive. So I can add members. Uh, and I can, you know, add whoever I want. What's important to note that um, there are different levels of permissions by which you can have people participate in your team drive. So do you want people to have full access, meaning they can manage who comes in, can upload, edit, delete any files that come in, uh, only edit access, so they can edit files and upload new files, comment access, or view access. Uh, it's important to note that Team Drive does not act completely the same as my drive. So, for instance, uh, right now, Jen and I sh share a folder called, I believe it's called, NHGEG, and that's where we have our planning documents live. I can actually invite Jen uh, and vice versa. She can invite me because in our own uh, school domains, uh, there is a checkbox that says, that staff can share files with other people outside the domain. Um, with Team Drive, you can only add people in your own domain currently. Uh, so for instance, if I wanted to create this Team Drive and maybe this is the route by which we want to share files, I actually would not be able to add um, Jen to the, the actual Team Drive. So that's one thing that's important to know. A uh, couple other things. Why Team Drive is good uh, is Google is trying to recognize that, uh, trying to fix the shared with me uh, section here, right? Did I make it? Did you make it? Did we have a? Sh did we make a shared folder? Um, did you add it to the shared folder so that I could see it? They're trying to solve that problem. And so with Team Drive, when you when you create a folder, all you do is pop that that file into Team Drive. And uh, you don't have to worry about, is it in shared with me or is it in my drive? Uh, instead, it's in team drive. So I'm going to bounce back here for a second. Uh, and you'll notice that I have, well, maybe if I probably should hit refresh here. And I'll go back to team drive. Uh, and so now you see that there are four team drives. You can have as many team drives as you want. You'll also notice over here it indicates how many people are actually in that particular team drive. So when I go into this one right here, you'll see that there's more content. There are three members into this particular team drive. Uh, and if I actually open up uh, a file, uh, I just was adding some content in here. It looks lovely, doesn't it? Uh, and OK, so I made this file. The, the two other people that are in this team drive also has access to this file. And the way it's set for this particular drive, anyone can edit anything that's in there. Um, if I want to actually use this in Google Classroom, there, that's not a problem. Because if I go back and I see that, again, it's not in my drive, it's in Team Drive. If I go to Google Classroom and I create an assignment right here, and I'll just say, um, take this quiz, and I go to Drive, you'll notice that there is a tab up at the top that says team drive uh, and then I can go into that particular drive and then I can find the test admin and then I can do the same things that I can do as if I actually created that folder in my drive a couple other things that are important to note that if anything that lives in team drive 
whether you've created it or whether someone else created it, um, you actually don't own the file, right? So uh, I'll show you an instance of that. I'll just come here, I'll say new, I'll make a Google Doc, and I'll just call this NHGEG, uh, NHGEG, GEG Team Drive, and this is an example. All right, so I just made a document, it's in my drive, okay? And I'll go to shared with me real quick, or sorry, I'll go to recent, and I will go to uh, NHGEG, and I will take this Google Doc right here, and I originally own it. I'm now going to drop it into the team drive. Uh, what you'll notice is it is no longer in my drive. It has disappeared. It's now in NHGEG. Um, it was last modified by me, but I am no longer the owner of this document. The team drive is the owner of the document. Um, other things that are important to note that uh, anything that lives in Team Drive, if I go to the share permissions um, and I decide that I want to maybe have this sharing permissions of this particular document be more public than just the people that are in the Team Drive, uh, you'll notice that this actually looks completely different than a typical uh, share with me. Uh, so if I come back here, uh, this is a completely different window than you would see uh, out, anything outside. So if I go to our, our document for today and I hit the share button, you'll see that it looks completely different. Uh, and so when I come back here and I say who has access and I want to turn the sharing permissions and actually turn it on, uh, one thing that is important to note that these files can only be seen in your actual school district. Again, Team Drive is something that's more locked down. It's more for the teams that you're working with in-house. So we have a couple of uh, committees who are using Team Drive uh, and looking at changing some things. And I had to have that conversation of anything that you make in Team Drive can only be seen in your actual school district, not outside. So if you're looking for feedback of people being able to see a particular document, you just have to note you just can't turn on that share with anyone with the link feature. Uh, so that is that is one little downfall. Uh, I'm trying to think other things that are important to note. Ah, I know. So if I go into this particular drive, now the permissions for all of these members that are in this drive is everyone has full access. So the other two people can actually add more people and they also have the ability to edit and upload any files they want to the actual team drive. So let's say, for instance, I want to take this document out. I have complete access. I can take it out. So if I do that, I'm going to actually I'll do this test admin. If I take it out and drag it to a different team drive, you'll notice that you get this message. Members of that particular drive will lose access unless the item is shared with them. So in other words, um, that when you have Team Drive and when you're looking at who has access and at what levels, if people have full access and one person accidentally takes the file out, that means no one else will have access to that file unless they particularly share it with them outside. Um, so that's, that's one little, another little thing that you need to note that when you're adding members, you'll want to consider what permission level they have. Um, but what this does solve and why you might want to go in this direction is it solves the problem of we have a staff member leaving this school year and uh, they made 50% of the documents. They own 50% of the documents. If you have Team Drive, no staff member owns the documents, but everyone in the team, quote unquote, owns the documents. Um, so that's, that's just a mind shift, and um, what I do like is the, the fact that it's trying to solve the problem of, oh, I shared that with you, look in my share with me section, or, oh, I forgot to put that in our shared um, folder that we made in my drive, uh, let me put that in there. Uh, it's, it's a mind shift of, oh, I put it in team drive. And one other thing I forgot to mention with your 
with your actual team drive, you can actually come in here and add folders. So you can, you can do it by units if you want or by study. You also have the ability, sorry, ability to, let me see if I can remember where this is. I think right up here. You can change the theme. So it, it, it has this classroom feel to it, if you will. So I could say that I want that to be um, that particular theme. Give it a second and it should pop up. Um, I also have the ability to rename. Uh, I have the ability to add more people. Or if I go to manage members, I can change their permission. Uh, so again, if I go back to the one that I just made and I go to add members, if you look at the drop down, these are the level of permissions. Only can view, only can comment. Uh, edit access is everyone can edit and they can upload new files. Um, and then the full access is anybody in that team drive can actually drag things out of the team drive if they want in and out, uh, as well as the other editing and add more people to that particular team drive. When it initially came out, I know that, or before it came out, and it was more in like a beta mode, uh, one thing that I noticed that was an issue was in classroom, Team Drive wasn't available. So when you went to add an assignment, it was still only uh, looking at your own drive, um, but they've resolved that issue of being able to pull from a Team Drive. So that was halting some of our staff members saying, whoa, 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 this, this is actually going to create more work for us. But I think now that there is this feature, I think more of our teachers will look into this approach. Um, the, just the number one thing is you don't own the documents. So if there is a teacher out there that's like, oh, I still want to be able to have my own copy, that's fine. You would just actually go to your shared team drive, you would open up that particular document, and you can still do your traditional file, make a copy, uh, and have your own copy in your drive if, if you're one of those people that just needs to be able to have, have their own copy. And you would just, instead having it live in that team drive, back it up a bit, get out of team drives, and actually pop it into your own drive. One of the things I like about it is um, when we would have to create curriculum for the oh, oh, sorry, would create curriculum for an entire department and then leave, and um, then it was okay. Well, what? Who did she have what shared with? Which and that was the real problem. And and yes, we could transfer ownership, but we'd have to also figure who was shared what, what file was shared with whom, and we would have that. And we had some who would leave and start deleting everything in their drive, and we're like, no, no, no. <laughs> it's like, yeah, but I'm leaving. Yes, but you shared curriculum with the rest of the. So what we used to do is we had an admin account, and anything that was shared district or department wide, you had to make Google admin or whatever the admin account the owner of. So that way, when they left, you can still be an editor. So it's kind of the same mind th thought um, that we did is that you're no longer the owner, but that's okay. You can still edit it. It's now owned by the school. So if you leave, yeah, and that because that was really hard when we would have someone leave or someone start deleting everything in their drive. We're like, you really don't have to do that. <laughs> sure. Well, and I also I also think Team Drive will uh, help with. Um, I I believe our leadership at our school will be actually creating a, a school team drive of mm -hmm. important school-wide documents. So right. instead of saying, oh, I, sh you know, in an email, it's, it was, it's in your shared with me, search this keyword, um, you know, being able to, to have a, a folder or right. multiple folders where it's just going to be a mind shift of just go to the school-wide team drive or, or right. whatever it's going to be called. But I do right. believe you know, I think our administrators are going to change a mind shift of, of just how they share out information now as a result of it as well. Huh. What's interesting is while we were watching, my team drive just turned on. We had turned the setting up, but I didn't see it. And then today it, it just now turned on. I was like, oh, oh nice. that. I can do team drive now. <laughs> I'm Excellent. like, come on, why isn't it working? Oh, there it is. <laughs> sometimes, so just so you know, if you're turning it on, sometimes it takes 24 hours for it to take there you go. And I, and, I, and I will say that uh, in our school district, um, currently Team Drive is not turned on for students. Right. Yeah. Uh, and uh, our administrator to Google did not want um, 
students to be able to create drives and share, have common. I, we feel yeah. like it's just way, it could potentially be way too messy uh, right. in terms of what could happen as a result of that. So the Thank team you. drive is only turned on for staff in our, in our school right. district. And I can see getting there later and I can see options for using it, but I think in the beginning and as just as, you know, we're all understanding it better and then be like, oh, okay. and it's kind of like with classroom where we actually now do have students who are in as co-teachers of classrooms in some places because they're running a club or a committee. So I think it's just as you get that understanding and comfort and then that makes its way. But I, I understand completely. Okay, what else do we have? Were you going we to want to go into upcoming events? Did you want to share the um, uh, extension or? Um, so, yeah. So the, uh, I, I, the other thing that we were going to share was that, and I think we've mentioned it before, yeah. um, but there, there, is a, there is a Chrome extension called, a, um, uh, what is it, Share, share the Classroom. Mm -hmm. And so I won't, I won't go to town with it. Because uh, I want to be cognizant of time, but basically it's this guy right here. It looks like the Google Classroom icon uh, in the Chrome Store. You will search for Share to Classroom. But basically, let's say I'm on a website, and in fact, I could go here, and let's say I wanted to share this very quickly with with students. Uh, I can click this icon, and as a result, what will happen is that it will find my classes. I could choose which Google Classroom I want to. Um, share this link out and if all the students had their Chromebooks open and there were already a student in the Google Classroom they would immediately get that actual link to their Chromebook and they could do what they need to do or let's say instead I don't know why that's not loading um, you'll have to trust me on that let's say instead this is the <laughs> Google Doc and I want to actually make this be an assignment uh, I can do the same thing so instead of coming all the way over here to my demo class and instead of coming down to the bottom right corner and saying create an assignment and writing some information down and going to to drive and finding the most recent document that I've created and doing all those due dates instead I can actually do that all right here on this particular page the page that I'm currently on it's less clicking so you just hit share to classroom maybe they will load maybe not um, if they don't, you'll again, you'll have to trust me. Uh, what you do is you click again on the class you want, and then you say, make an assignment. And then right then and there, in that actual box right up here, you can actually fill in the due date, um, whether or not you want it to just share, view, um, make a copy. Uh, they're really trying to streamline the process and the organization, organization of, of um, uh, delivering content with students. I don't know why it's not working. <laughs> it's because, same thing as me. It's like when you're looking at it, it's just not going to do it. One thing I love about it is, um, especially if you're planning over the summer or the end of the year or whenever, or vacation, you can also use it to curate things without posting this assignment. So you find some great sites or some great resources. You can tap that little share to classroom, choose a class, you maybe give it a title like, site I want, whatever you want to name it, and then you could drop down and save it as a draft. So you don't have to have in the mind the exact assignment. You don't mm -hmm. have to have in your mind the exact thing you want. And it might even be for your next year's class that you're going to pull in to be a post for next year. So you can actually curate all the resources you want, put them in as a saved draft, and then you could pull it into that class next year, that re classroom repository or whatever and so that's the other thing it's just a way you can curate and get your stuff together in classroom um, without being ready to fully do the assignment yep okay do you want to do upcoming events so yeah so we have um what do we have coming up so litchfield yes there is a um google apps summit that's happening from the apps events so let me i'll just again share my screen um, so right here, and I believe the the dates are well, yeah, July 18th through the 20th at Campbell High School. So if you are interested in um, wanting to attend a a Google for Education uh, apps event, definitely something to check out. Uh, and I believe they have do they have who's actually I believe they have who's present us speakers. Oh, look who's there. <laughs> um, so some familiar faces there 
um, that will be presenting. And of course, Alice and Malika will be there. Um, and then some other speakers as well. So definitely something to check out uh, if you are looking for more PD uh, in the Google area over the summer. Also, I know that um, Kristen McAuliffe, I think, is coming up with the call for proposals. I believe it has come out or it's coming out very soon uh, for the end of November. So if you're either interested in presenting uh, or you just want to learn more about tech, it's not necessarily just Google related, definitely something to check out. It's always the, the week after our Thanksgiving break. Right. Uh, so more more information on that will be coming out soon. Uh, what am I missing, Jen? Uh, let me see. I think they got everything. Um, yep. Nope. We've got everything. So um, I'm just going to grab the again and just remind people if the um, link for the document. Can you see? Do I have the document up? Here we go. The link for the document today with all those resources is right here. So here's the link you need for the resources, the extensions, and the directions on how to do um, classroom repository and so forth are all right up there. And I'm going to stop sharing. And I'm going to thank everyone for joining us today. Um, Craig and myself, this, oh, go ahead. One more thing I want to mention. Um, I know that there are a couple other uh, New Hampshire Google certified trainers yes. that uh, most recently became certified. So we wanted to send a big kudos to them. Uh, I know of, I think, two or three. So hopefully they'll be able to join us uh, in our in our monthly uh, monthly hangouts here. But we did want to say a, a shout out to them. So congratulations. Thank you, everyone. Have a good night.